In this video, what I wanna do is talk all about focus stacking, when to do it, and how it's super easy to do in Photoshop when you just follow these easy steps. Morning everybody, fantastic to see you all again. So I've got two days where I'm back in England. I've just come from the Faroe Islands running a workshop and I'm back to Lofoten. I'm sure everyone feels really sorry for me. <laughs> no, I, I, it's so lucky, but it is fairly hectic. And I've been meaning to do this video for a while, so I thought this would be a really good time to talk about how to focus stack and when I focus stack. I've got an image that I can show you that I took in the Pharaohs where I did this, and I can sort of talk you through the process in Photoshop as well, because it's super, super simple to do. And actually, I've started doing it more and more now. So the first thing to talk about is when I decide when I'm going to focus stack. And that is usually based on whether I can get everything in one shot. I'm a little bit of a lazy photographer. I like to just take everything in one shot. If I can get away with you know not stacking things or doing exposure blending, all those sort of things, I'd just rather get it in one shot. I wanna spend as much time in the field shooting and as little time back on my computer. But there are times when you need to focus stack. So quite often I shoot in with um, wide angle lens, yeah, so this is my 10 to 24 on my Fuji here, and usually at 10 millimeters, this gets pretty much everything in, in focus. So if we look at APS-C, which is, which is this, and I, I don't really like going above F13 on, on, on this particular lens. If, if I'm at 10 millimeters and if I focus on infinity, then the thing that's acceptably in focus closest to me is 0.4 meters away, so about 40 centimeters away. So that's really close, you know, I could, I could be sort of, here away from this this calendar here my new calendar talk about that later um, and you know that will be acceptably in focus with my full frame uh, I've just got a 14 to 30 millimeter lens now which would replace my 16 to 35 millimeter lens so that 14 millimeters allows me to just get a little bit a little bit closer so around about 50 to 60 centimeters is the acceptably in focus and what I like to do to make sure things are perfectly in focus because acceptably in focus I don't think it's quite good enough I said double that so that means that I need to be roughly whether I'm using this on my full frame between around about 90 centimeters and 1.2 or 3 meters away when I've got it as wide open as possible as soon as you zoom in a little bit then that um, closest focusing point drops back a little bit so when I've decided that, when I thought, okay, if something's say 30 centimeters or 20 centimeters away from the front of my lens or even 40, 50 centimeters away, that's when I think, okay, I'm gonna focus stack this. So let's get into how I do that and the things that I go through when I'm in the field to actually focus stack it. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put my lens, my aperture, at around about f between f 5.6 and f 8 i'll probably put it around about f 5.6 on, on my fuji and around probably 7 or 8 on my nikon depending on which lens i've got but i want to use the best part of the lens so the optimum aperture not worrying too much about depth of field because obviously my focus stacking is going to take care of that so once i've done that and if say um i, I put it on f8 for argument's sake with my nikon then what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it on my tripod um, and make sure I'm, it doesn't move at all. And all I do um, with my camera, I'm lucky I've got a touch screen at the back here and I just touch and when I touch it does a three second delay and then takes a photo. Before it does that it focuses on that point I touch. So I focus on the foreground, so the, the flowers, um, then I focus on the mid ground, the rock maybe and then I focus on the distance, maybe the mountain. And that gives me three images. And I find that three is usually enough when you're shooting really wide angle. If you're not shooting wide angle, you might need to do five or seven. So once I've got those images, the most important thing is you haven't moved your tripod. So I've got those three images, one focused on the foreground, one on the mid-ground, and one on the distance. Then I can bring those into Lightroom, and then I'll show you what I do with them when I'm in Lightroom. So we're gonna go into Lightroom then. So here I've got these three images that um, one is um, focused on the foreground. So if I just zoom in, you can see that this one, the foreground's in focus. This one here, the last one, the foreground isn't in focus, but if I just go up to the top here, you'll see that the background is pinned sharp. So all I need to do is select those three and then go edit in, 
open as layers in Photoshop. So this is going to open three layers with those three images in Photoshop and then I can blend them together in Photoshop. And the great thing is that Photoshop does pretty much all this work for you. So whilst I'm waiting for it to do that, I just tell you a little bit about my new calendar. So this is my 2020 calendar that I, I've launched, my second year of, of, of producing a calendar. The photos you can see on my website, I'll put a link down below and there'll probably be a link that appears here. here. These are the 12 photos that I, I've shot. Thanks ever so much to everyone that helped me out with this because um, I couldn't decide on two months and I, I sent out an email and everyone, everyone, I think I had about 800 people get back to me and, and help me choose. So thanks ever so much for that. Now I've got pre-orders for this calendar and anybody that pre-orders it up to the first thousand, they'll get three free greeting cards. Um, so that you have to pay for those greeting cards. And that's why I'm only doing it for a limited of a thousand because I will run out of greeting cards. And you'll also get free delivery after the pre-orders, then there will be a charge for delivery and there won't be the greeting card. So if you do want to get that, if you want to get it for included free delivery and you want to get those greeting cards, then you need to make your order before the end of July and ideally as soon as possible because it's down to the limited stock of those greeting cards. It looks like it's opened in Photoshop, so we can go and take a look at it in Photoshop here. So this was an image where the flowers were really interesting. It was quite a, a really sort of flat light. There was, it just rained. There wasn't a lot of water in the waterfall, so that the sort of distance wasn't really interesting. So we we're just trying to find some sort of foreground detail and play around with some foreground detail. We found these flowers um, and I, f I felt like they made an interesting shot and as much as anything it's probably not the best shot in the world but it does demonstrate this focus stacking um, pretty well because as you can see here's a photo of, of one of the workshop attendees shooting it. I was actually closer than that as well. I, I had my 14 millimeter lens on my Nikon Z7. I was really close to it. I was probably about this far away from the flowers right over the top of them looking down. So what we need to do now to to actually combine those three exposures is just select the three layers here on the right hand side and we're just gonna go to edit and we're gonna go auto blend layers. And when we get auto blend layers, you make, need to make sure, you can do, also do panoramas here as well. You need to make sure it's stacked images. We're gonna do a stacked image, seamless tones and colors and untick content aware fill transparent areas. You don't want that to, you don't want it to do that. So we're just gonna click OK, and then it goes and looks at that and does some super Photoshop magic, and it basically tries to find the areas that are sharp and, and then um, include them and stack them together and create masks for each one. So once it's done that, you can see that it's worked because if you look down here on the right-hand side, we've got three masks, one that's looking like it's masking the foreground here, one the mid-ground, and one just showing the distance as well. Now, sometimes it makes a little bit of a mistake, and all you need to do then is click on the mask, click on the brush tool, and you can just paint in the areas that you think should be included or not included. I'm not gonna go through that in a lot of detail because to be honest, most of the time I just take it as it is and it works fantastically well. Um, but you're probably best just to you know, have a look around the image and check it's worked okay. Once you're happy with it, all you do is close this and click save and that then exports it as a TIFF image back into Lightroom and then you've got that stacked image that you can then go and edit and play with um, and do all your other corrections that you might want to do in Photoshop. It's that simple, it really, really, really is. So I'll leave you with that, it's gonna be a really short video, I've gotta go and pack, charge and sort out all my other things. Do take a look at the calendar and the pre-orders, like I said, there's a link in the description and thanks in advance for any orders you do place, I massively appreciate them and it really, really helps me and this channel. And make sure you follow me on Instagram because I'm gonna be posting loads of stories from Lafota and I'm really excited about going there in the summer and watching the amazing golden light. Thanks ever so much for watching. Until next Sunday, bye.